live from the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. It's the Cube covering DevNet Create 2018. Brought to you by Cisco. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in Silicon Valley, we're in Mountain View, California for Cisco's DevNet Create. I'm here with Laura Cooney, our analyst here with Wikibon. Of course, our next guest is Monica Houston, director of Hackster Live, uh, Hackster IO, Hackster.io, open source hardware, really kind of creating a great community model. You know, really started from a great idea. Great to have you, thanks for coming, joining us. Thanks for having me. So we're here at Cisco Live, so no better place to talk about hardware and software coming together. Um, but first, talk about how Hackster started, how it grew, where it is now today. Okay, so Hackster got started about four years ago uh, here in San Francisco. Um, the founders, uh, Adam and Ben, they started, they want to make a community for people that were interested in building open source hardware. Adam had actually come from starting his own hardware startup and realized that there were very few resources for people like him that wanted to build electronics and so uh, started a community. I got involved, started, uh, we actually bought a DeLorean, uh, drove it around the country and did hardware hackathons in 12 different cities in the US. And so where's it today in terms of numbers, community members, and you're based in Seattle, is that right? Uh, I'm in Seattle, yeah. Okay, yeah. so what's the what community look like? What is, what's the numbers look like? There are half a million people on our site and 15,000 open source projects. Wow, awesome. Yeah. That is totally awesome. What, what projects do you see being the most popular on your site? Uh, all, lots of home automation. Home automation is a really popular topic. Mm. Um, we also get a lot of some pretty cool like music, synthesizers, uh, amplifiers, amplifiers uh, all kinds of stuff, yeah. That's great. Now, say I'm like a, I, I you know, have coded before, but I'm not necessarily truly a developer. Like I'm, you know, a, a moonlighter, sure. per se. <laughs> How could I get involved in this? Oh man, there are, there's tons of resources. So actually on our site, you can sort by difficulty. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find some beginner projects, you can sort by difficulty and find only beginner projects. Um, also, we have tutor so tutorials, getting started projects. Mm -hmm. So like say you buy an Arduino, or you buy a, a particle board, and you want to learn how to use it, you can search for a getting started project on the site. That's great. How are you, like, so you're at DevNet Create yeah. with Cisco, <laughs> and um, what are you doing here? Like, what are you talking about? What are you really interested in? So I have a project called Breadboard to PCB. I'm actually, so I was a front-end web developer and then I got into all this, so I'm fairly new to it as well. I've been doing it for about six years. Uh, I'm not an electrical engineer, <laughs> I've taught myself. But um, I'm doing a project called Breadboard to PCB. I made a PCB last year, uh, sort of taught myself how to do that and realized it's actually not that hard and I want to spread that around to people and make them realize that they could build their own PCBs too. That's terrific, that's awesome. Um, are you and Cisco DevNet looking to share content or anything like that that might be cool? Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, and uh, is there any more you can tell us about that or is that still in the works? Still in the works, yeah. Um, we offer, so we have um, all these different partners like Microsoft, Intel, hopefully Cisco as well, mm -hmm. uh, that do, um, they have their hubs hosted on our site and people share their projects there with full instructions of a template we actually go through and make sure everyone shares their code and their schematics, so they're very well put together projects. Great. Talk about some of the most exciting things you've worked on, because one of the things I love about the open source culture is the creativity kind of comes out of nowhere. <laughs> um, we were just talking before we came on about my son, how he's been hacking his own thing. With this culture now, you have so much online information. You go to YouTube, there's always a how-to. These communities have great resources. You guys got a robust community. So there's always that natural, Organic, whoa, look what this person did. Yeah. Can you share some stories around some killer things that, <laughs> that happened, that, not, not killer, and, you know, good things, or just some <laughs> things that are just creatively cool that you never would have thought would happen? Oh man, uh, so Alan Pan is a maker, I think he's in, based in LA, he, does, he has a YouTube channel, Alan Pan, um, and he did this really cool, I guess The Last Airbender is a popular movie, and he did this flame activated, or punch activated flamethrower on his wrist. Uh, so, try it at home. <laughs> it's <laughs> a little dangerous. He, what's his YouTube channel? Uh, I believe it's Alan Pan, is his name. Yeah. So there's some creative stuff, so people are just tinkering around, but there's also some serious hardware engineers. Any mm -hmm. businesses starting out of this? Have you seen any like uh, good ventures emerge? Uh, there's been a few things that have come out of it. There was a really cool watch that was kickstarted that um, if you're a cyclist, 
you can wear it and it tells you like which way to turn based on your um, GPS. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some really nice Bluetooth, very elegant like Bluetooth um, controlled lights that with different colors, uh, those are nice, yeah. So what, what, do you, what are some of the things you guys are doing um, in the community that you think's notable that you should you could share, that people might be interested in? Like, how do you guys organize? Are some things that you guys do differently? What are some of the like community activities that you know are standard? You know, the normal things. You have meetups and whatnot, but like, what, how do you guys run your community? What are some of your guiding principles? Can you share how things work? Uh, so we are always open. So you can go to our site, and there's no, you know, there's no paywall or barrier to view all of our content, because our content comes from our community. And like they're the ones that are, we're, we're encouraging them to really document their work. Um, also, yeah, so we do uh, hardware hackathons where we try to yeah. make sure everyone's very, we're very beginner friendly, I guess. That's one of our goals, is to make sure people that are coming from all different, you know, it's the artists that are making cool projects. So and, when new people come in, they mm -hmm. get a yeah, well, welcome letter, kind of <laughs> community email, hey, is there chat? All that stuff going on, all that stuff. There is, that we have place. a news feed, we have discussion, uh, comments on the projects that we yeah. moderate a bit, so yeah. So hackster.io. Hackster.io, yeah. All right, what's the coolest thing you guys are doing right now that you think uh, we should know about? So, sort of related. Actually, this weekend I was at a workshop to learn how to make my own fire projects. <laughs> I like fire. Fire um. is like a pyromaniac <laughs> community. Yeah. I want the flamethrower fist thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm instantly like, yeah. Yeah. YouTube trip. I want that. That's a great party I think trick. It's great. Until, so something lights up. Right. All right, so what are you doing here at Cisco? What's the focus here? Obviously, great culture they're building here. Very um, developer, not a lot of Cisco Kool-Aid being injected here, but much more of an outreach for Cisco. What's your, what's your focus here? This is all new for me, actually. So I did not realize that Cisco had such a huge developer community and was really involved, and like, this is a great conference. It's, people true. are so nice. Yeah, and, and the Internet of Things is a big hardware yeah. focused market. Yes. Yeah. So they got all the software there. It's only getting bigger, yeah. Cool, mm -hmm. cool. All right, so um, what's new in Seattle? Give us an update on what you're doing. All right, it's still raining there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is actually very good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Microsoft up there, you've yeah. got Amazon, mm -hmm. University of Washington, so you have a kind of a nice kind of geek culture developing up there. So, yeah, good open source hardware vibe up there. What's the community yeah. like in Seattle? Yeah, I run meetups. There's lots of people that come out to um, different hardware meetups. And there's like a lot of new, cool hardware startups. Uh, like for instance, Glowforge is a laser cutter that was uh, kickstarted recently. Yep. Um, there's some other really neat, Deco is a uh, home automation light switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some pretty cool startups. So if someone wants to join your community, what would you say to them who's watching this video right now? Hey, uh, what are they, what, what's it like to join? What are they going to be, how do, what's the vibe like? What are some of the things that are involved? What's, what's, the, what's the value for someone watching that might want to join that's totally into tinkering with hardware? One thing is um, a great format to share your projects. So, and also to document your projects. Documentation is, really important, and I like to say that a project doesn't exist yeah. unless it's documented. Yeah. So, documenting it, and then we can, we'll boost your project, we'll share it on our social media, and we'll get lots of views, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, open, it's a nerd culture. I mean, by the way, robotics is the hottest thing going on. I mean, you, you can't get involved. A lot of the younger generation are absolutely enamored with robotics. Just at all levels, from you know, you got drones, which is super cool, right? Then you got all the kind of stuff that's it's all about hardware. Well, this hardware. is this is great. I'm on the site and I'm looking right now at the mind control drone. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and that is, you know, my question is, does that really work? Can I, you know, can I actually do something, you know, take this and learn from the site and actually build that? There are, and there are some uh, developer. I guess it's EEG or mm -hmm. EKG. Um, EMG is another one that. You can really, you know, you can think left or think right, and it will go left or right. It figures it out. Yeah, that is so cool. Are people meeting up on the site and doing work together? Is there like a collaborative kind of hub going on there? Uh, uh, there are some people that are doing that. Yeah, there was um, a few people on our site that were doing work on the what was it? Um, Elon Musk's thing, the um, Hyperloop. Yep. There was like the Hyperloop contest, and so a few people on our site were doing some work for that. Um, so yeah, people are people are meeting there. Yeah, for sure. Monica, great to have you here in theCUBE. Thanks for sharing about Hackster.io. We're going to check it out, and thanks for the tip on the YouTube channel. We'll get the, the, uh, the fire. Yeah, make thrower. your own <laughs> flame John, stars. John's going to be yeah, busy yeah. this weekend. Yeah, I'm a pyromaniac. <laughs> I keep playing in matches all the time. So thanks for coming out. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Hackster.io. Here are theCUBE here, live in Mountain View, California. Cisco DevNet Create, the Computer History Museum. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>